Good morning. Happy Monday and welcome back to reading How to See Yourself as You Really Are by His Holiness the Dalai Lama. And I will be reading wherever we left off. And we are on page 57 for whoever is logging on. And we're just going to dive right in. All right, it says examining consciousness. The consciousness involved in looking at a blue vase does not have spatial parts, spatial, spatial parts, because it is not physical, but it exists as a continuum of moments. Consciousness looking at a blue vase has earlier and later moments in its continuum, and these are parts of a stream of consciousness, no matter how short. Then consider the briefest moments in a continuum. If even the brief, brief, briefest of moments did not have a beginning, middle, and end, it could not join. It could not join with other brief moments to become continuum. It would be equally close to an earlier moment and to a later moment, in which case there would be no continuum at all, as Nagarjuna says. Just as a moment has an end, so it have a beginning and a middle, are to be analyzed like a moment. Pardon. Also, the beginning, middle, and end are to be analyzed like a moment meditative reflection consider consciousness paying attention to a blue vase reflect on its coming into being in dependence upon its part the several moments that constitute its continuum see if its dependence upon its parts conflicts with its appearing as if it exists in its own right Examining space. Even space has parts, such as the space associated with particular directions, such as space in the east and space in, space in the west, or particular objects. Meditative reflection. Consider space in general. Reflect on its coming into being in dependence upon its parts north, south, east, and west. If its dependence upon its parts conflicts with its appearing as if it exists in its own right. Also, consider the space of a cup. Reflect on its coming into being, independence upon its parts, the top half and the bottom half of the cup, See if its dependence upon its parts conflicts with its appearing as if it exists in its own right. Chapter 5 Because there are no phenomena that there are not dependent arisings, there are no phenomena that are not empty of inherent existence. Nagarjuna's fundamental treatise of the middle called wisdom. As explained in the previous chapter, all phenomena, whether impermanent or permanent have parts. The parts in the whole depend on other, but they seem to have their own entities. If the whole world, pardon, if the whole and its parts existed, 
the way they appear to you, you should be able to point out a you should be able to point out a whole that is separate from its parts, but you cannot. There is a conflict between the way the whole and the parts appear and way and the way they actually exist, but this does not mean that there are no holes. Because if holes did not exist, you could not speak of something as being a part of anything. The conclusion must be that there are holes, but their existence is set up in dependence upon their parts. They do not exist independently, as Nagarjuna's fundamental treatise of the, on the middle called Wisdom says, that which arises dependently is not one with that on which it depends and it all and is also not inherently other than it hence it is nothing it is not nothing and not inherently existent how the reasoning of dependent arising works dependent or independence there is no other choice when something is one it is definitely not the other. Because dependent and independent are a dichotomy, when you see that something cannot be independent, that something cannot be independent, or functioning under its own power, there is no other option but to see that it is dependent. Being dependent in its empty of being under its own power, look at it this way. A table depend on it, depends on its existence of, on its parts. So we call the collection of its parts the basis upon which it is set up. When we search analytically to try to find this table that appears to our minds as if it exists independently, we must look for it within this basis, the legs, the top, and so forth. But nothing from within the parts is such a table. Thus, these things that are not a table become a table in, in, in dependence upon thought. A table does not exist in its own right. From this viewpoint, a table is something that arises or exists dependently. It depends on certain causes, it depends upon its parts, and it depends upon thought. These are the three modes of dependent arising. Of these, one of the more important factors is the thought that designates an object. Existing in dependence upon conceptuality is the most subtle meaning of dependent arising. Nowadays, physicists are discovering that phenomena do not exist objectively in and of themselves, but exist in the context of involvement with an observer. For example, the Dalai Lama, I, must be within this area where my body is. There is no other place it could be possibly be found. This is clear. But when you investigate in the in this area, you cannot find an eye that has its own substance. Nevertheless, the Dalai Lama is a man, a monk, a Tibetan, who can speak, drink, eat, and sleep. This is sufficient proof that he exists, even though he cannot be found. This means that there is nothing to be found that is the I, but this fact does not sim but this fact does not imply that the I does not exist. How could it? That would be silly. The I definitely does exist, but when it exists yet cannot be found, we have to say that it arises independence upon thought. It cannot be posited in any other way. Emptiness does not mean nothingness. 
There is no question that persons and things exist. The question is how or in what manner they exist. When we consider a flower, for instance, and think this flower has a nice shape, nice color, and nice texture, it seems as if nothing it seems as if there is something concrete that possesses these qualities of shape, color, and texture. When we look into these qualities as well as the parts of the flower, they seem to be qualities or parts of the flower, such as the color of the flower, the shape of the flower, the stem of the flower, and the petals of the flower. As if there is a flower that possesses these qualities or parts. However, if the flower really exists the way it appears, we should be able to come up with something separate from all of these qualities and parts that is the flower. But we cannot. Such a flower is not found upon analysis or th through other scientific tools, even though previously it seemed so substantial, so findable. Because a flower has effects, it certainly exists. But when we search to find a flower existing in accordance with our ideas about it, that is not at all findable. Something that truly exists from its own side should become more and more obvious when analyzed. It should be clearly found, but the opposite is the case. Nevertheless, this does not mean that it does not exist, for it is effective, it creates effects. The fact that it is not found under analysis just indicates that it does not exist the way it appears to our senses and to our thoughts, that is, so concretely established within itself. If not finding objects when they are analyzed meant that they did not exist, there would be no sentient beings, no bod bodhisattvas, no Buddhas, nothing pure and nothing impure. There would be no need for liberation. There would be no reason to meditate on emptiness. However, it is obvious that persons and things help and harm, that pleasure and pain exist, that we can free ourselves from pain and gain happiness. It would be foolish to deny the existence of persons and things when we are obviously affected by them. The idea that persons and things do not exist is a denial of the is a denial of the obvious. It is foolish. The Indian scholar Yogi Nagarjuna demonstrates that phenomena are empty of inherent existence by the fact that they are dependent arisings. This itself is a clear sign that the view that phenomena do not inherently exist is not nihilistic. He does not give a reason why phenomena are empty, that they are unable to function instead. He calls attention to the fact that they arise dependent on causes and conditions. Meditative reflection. Consider. Dependent and independent are a dichotomy. Anything that exists is either the one or the other. When something is dependent and must be empty of being under its own power. Nowhere in the parts of the body and mind that form the basis of I can we find the I. Therefore, the I is established not under its own power but through the force of others of other conditions its causes its parts and thought all right it has been 15 minutes and i'm going to stop right there because that will begin chapter six and then we're gonna interrupt so thank you so much for joining and either i'll see you later or i'll see you tomorrow but nonetheless i'll see you soon um, you can find these hashtag Rubai Yogi Reading, also 
Ruba Yogi. Ruba Yogi, how to see yourself as you really are. And Ruba Yogi, how to see yourself as you really are. Day blank. Today is day six. All right. Have a wonderful day. Go kick some ass and I'll see you soon.